Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to today's session of the uh, triannual Moodle MOOC 4. My name is Nellie Deutsch, and our presenter for today is uh, the star, Shelly Terrell. And there's Shelly there. You can see her in the webcam. If you could just add in the chat box. Hi, Shelly. If you could add in the chat box where you're from and anything else you'd like to tell us where you're sitting, whether it's at home, at work, on the beach, uh, in a restaurant, wherever you happen to be. And um, okay, so while you're doing that and getting acquainted in the chat box, let me uh, tell you a little bit. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Shelly. Shelly is the teacher, but I think foremost, she is a social queen because she um, relates to everyone in a very positive way. She's an instructional technology trainer, social media consultant, and she does everything, everything to make our lives as teachers really, really exciting by sharing everything that she knows. And she knows so much and speaks so quickly because it's very hard. Uh, so I don't want to take any more of her time to get everything uh, in a session. She's vice president of educator outreach uh, for Parentella. And she coordinates and you can read all this. But what's really exciting and I find um, very, very interesting is that she also went to the University of Phoenix. I didn't know you were there. Uh, if I'd known, I would have said hello. <laughs> In any case, uh, let me get this. This is, I think, the highlight of, uh, is it this year or the past two years, Shelley? And there's also a book with it. And that's the 30 Goals Challenge for Teachers. And if you've never heard of this, get involved because it's definitely what we need, Shelley. So I'm going to let you continue there. I don't know which one. Is this A? Yes, that's A. All right, so thank you, Shelly. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. I'll mute my mic thank and you. take away my webcam. Thank you so much for joining me today, especially on a Sunday and a weekend. And I love when I get to be with teachers uh, just like you. And one of the reasons why is because this is above and beyond. And it already tells me because you're here, you have such a great big heart and that you're an extraordinary teacher because you don't have to be here. So I really, really appreciate you being here and please applaud yourself because you transform lives. And so today I want to give you some ideas and I'll buy some insight to make your job easier. So I want to show you some little examples of my experience. Uh, I actually work with Intact right now, and I teach teachers all over the world um, on a Moodle course. And it's been really extraordinary. I, I think Mar uh, Maria Jesus is in here, who's my um, editor, designer, extraordinary hero. She's just wonderful. I love her so much. But um, what happens is that she, um, her and I, did something that was really different and we got our students to do all of these amazing things. It was really, really difficult for them. A lot of them struggled so much. But at the end, every single one of them said it transformed their lives. And they said that they were so happy we had them go through the journey. And they also said they're going to tell everybody about it. So that's what we want for you, to have that kind of impact with your students. So I'm going to show you what some of the things we do. Um, and then some of the things that they've done with other courses I've designed. Um, I've done math. Um, so many different things as well. But first, we need to... Uh, what you can do if my voice is breaking is you might need to take away my webcam. So I don't know if, um, maybe if I stop broadcasting webcam. Okay, um, does that make it a little bit better? Okay, so hopefully. Um, think about <laughs> the first way that we learn. And if you think about it, 50,000 years ago, they found the first cave paintings, and these were in Spain. 
And when you, you think about it, this is the first way we learn, even before we had language, even before we had um, a writing system or anything. This Hi, is everyone. We, Thank you for coming. This is how we shared our stories. This is how we communicated with each other. And if you look at the way we learn now, I found this on Facebook from a couple of friends. I muted them, but if you look at it, it's kind of funny because if you can think about what is the story here, think about what the story is here. It's hunting and gathering, right? They're trying to go grab their food. And here, um, somebody says on Facebook, almost 3 p.m., on streets is either starving or going outside to get something to eat. And then, yeah, it's another exactly, Dr. Nelly, um, a wall, like, on Facebook. And then the, the comments are here. I suppose cavemen probably left similar messages on their wall, too. And then another person says, what a great idea. They walked by and they put a mark because that meant they liked it. So I thought that was really funny. Uh, we still share our stories. And every single day, you share a story. You share a story digitally and today you're sharing your story you're sharing your experience in the chat box you're doing it digitally online so think about what kind of story you shared today and yesterday it could have been with your brother your sister a parent a student a friend so think about it and think of what well, thank kind you. of story did you share and where did you share them did you share it on facebook did you share it on instagram did you share it in text message did you share it in Pinterest. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today, especially on a Sunday and a weekend. And I love when I get to be with teachers uh, just like you. And one of the reasons why is because this is above and beyond. And it already tells me because you're here that you have such a great big heart and that you're an extraordinary teacher because. You don't have to be here. So I really, really appreciate you being here. And please applaud yourself because you transform lives. And so today I want to give you some ideas and also provide some insight to make your job easier. So I want to tr show you some real examples of my experience. Uh, I actually work with INTEF right now. And I teach teachers all over the world. Um, on a Moodle course and it's been really extraordinary I, I think Mar uh, Maria Jesus is in here who's my um, editor designer extraordinaire hero she's just wonderful I love her so much but um, what happens is that she um, her and I did something that was really different and we got our students to do all of these amazing things. It was really, really difficult for them. A lot of them struggled so much. But at the end, every single one of them said it transformed their lives. And they said that they were so happy we had them go through the journey. And they also said they're going to tell everybody about it. So that's what we want for you, to have that kind of impact with your students. So I'm going to show you what some of the things we um, and then some of the things that they've done with other courses I've designed, um, I've done math, um, so many different things as well. But first, we need to, uh, what you can do if my voice is breaking is you might need to take away my webcam. So I don't know if, um, maybe if I stop broadcasting webcam. Okay, um, does that make it a little bit better? You think? Okay, so hopefully, um, think about the first way that we learn. And if you think about it, 50,000 years ago, they found the first caves, paintings, and these were in Spain. And when you, you think about it, this is the first way we learn, even before we had language, even before we had um, a writing system or anything. This is what we this is how we shared our stories. This is how we communicated with each other. And if you look at the way we learn now, I found this on Facebook from a couple of friends. I muted them. But if you look at it, it's kind of funny. Because if you can think about what is the story here, think about what the story is here. It's hunting and gathering, right? They're trying to go 
grab their food. And here, um, somebody says on Facebook, almost 3 p.m., I'm faced with either starving or going outside to get something to eat. And then, yeah, it's another exactly, Dr. Nelly, um, a wall like on Facebook. And then the, the comments are here. I suppose cavemen probably left similar messages on their walls, too. And then another person says, what a great idea. They walked by and they put a mark because that meant they liked it. So I thought that was really funny. Um, we still share our stories. And every single day, you share a story. You share a story digitally. And today, you're sharing your stories. You're sharing your experience in the chat box. You're doing it digitally online. So think about what kind of story you shared today and yesterday. It could have been with your brother, your sister, a parent, a student, a friend. So think about it. And think of what kind of stories that you shared. And where did you share them? Did you share it on Facebook? Did you share it on Instagram? Did you share it in text message? Did you share it in Pinterest? What was the last social media site you used? Type that in the chat box. So we want to see the last social you used to communicate. And if you could just click that in the chat box. OK, so uh, Jose Antonio used Facebook. Awesome. Facebook and Google, Skype. Twitter, so I'm seeing different ones, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Moodle, okay, email, yes, definitely email, we do communicate that way as well. So every single day, we, if many of us, every single day, communicate now through technology, and guess what? We also learn that way. So think about the things that you use and that you do with technology. Do you use filters on images and videos? Have you ever done a, put up a picture on Instagram? And have you ever used a cool filter? Or have you ever put a, a picture up or a video up and you've edited it? Or, or maybe you've added some sepia or maybe you added uh, black and white or made it into a cartoon. So think, and then have any of you posted selfies? How about have any of you Googled for information? Have you used a hashtag? Have you tagged someone in a picture? Have you tagged someone in a status update? Have you shared images? Have you tagged your images? Have you put a location on your images? Have you updated a status before? Have you posted a status? Have you bookmarked? Have you liked something? Have you commented on something? Have you reposted, retweeted, shared, reblogged? Yes, because this is how you learn every single day and how your students learn as well. One of the people that I really admire um, and that I think is just incredible who saw this even before all of us see this is David Crystal, and in 2008 he wrote, what do our learners do now, or even what do we do now? We write blogs, which are like diaries, like when we all used to journal. Um, we all, in fact, every single day you read and write, and your learners read and write on a mobile device, on the internet. In fact, David Crystal says that we do it more than Jane Austen, who is one of the, the, the most prolific writers could it ever have because of our technology. Because of our technology, we were able to be quite literate. A lot of us think our students aren't very literate, but our students do so much with the device. Think about it. Every single day, they have to translate. They translate into emojis. They translate English or language into text message, into short speak. You have to understand what the language is in order to translate it into symbols and numbers and little icons. So when you think about it, we read and we consume a lot of information daily. And some of us are addicted to our devices. Our students definitely are addicted to their devices, which means that they're constantly reading and writing and communicating. When we think about that, we can make our e-learning that way. We can make Moodle that way. We can make our platforms this way. And what we have to think about is how can we change the environment
to match the way our students learn. We can't get so obsessed with the way that we started learning and not incorporate the way that we learn now. So how do we integrate these rituals into our Moodle or virtual learning environments in general? Well, the first thing I want to tell you is good learning is good learning. So don't focus on um, Moodle or Facebook or any of the platforms you use, Haiku or whatever LMS, um, Second Life, wherever you teach, don't focus on that. The focus should be on the learning. And there are things that we know, pedagogically speaking, is fantastic for learning, such as what do you, when you teach face-to-face, -face, what is, what are some things that you do that you think is really important for learners? Well, one thing is maybe play. Um, do any of you think that playing is a great form of learning? Or maybe movement? Or maybe there's a lot of things. Yeah, exactly. So on our e-learning, on our virtual platforms, when I design it in mind, these are the things that I put into it. Citizenship. We need to learn how to be good with each other. And, and I don't say digital citizenship because citizenship is so important even in the regular classroom. We need to be a community and help each other. And when your students begin to feel like they are connected with each other and they can help each other, they're all going to do much better. There has to be that opportunity to experiment. Our students need to come in and be curious. They need to have real world connections. In other words, what they see in uh, on our platform, they need to be able to apply outside in the real world. They need to be able to play. Um, Pyragogy, that's a, a theory that I'm going to show you in a little bit. Um, collaboration, they need to be able to have those opportunities to collaborate just like we in, in our uh, physical classrooms really benefit from having tutors, you can have that in an online platform. Uh, creativity, chances, and Sylvia Guinan um, is amazing at this. She, she's just one of the best people that I know that really does this with her students online. Um, the ability to be curious and explore, we need to send them to exploring journeys um, and also get them to connect with other experts around the world. How do we do all this? Well, I'm going to show you, so don't worry, don't panic. I'm going to show you how we do this and give you some examples. One of the people that I think is just so incredible with this is Howard Rheingold, and I've learned so much from him. There's a free ebook, so please go to piragogy.com and you can read the whole theory and download it for free from one of the best writers and thinkers um, that I know in our generation. So. Um, the, he talks about co-learning and pedagogy, and this really transformed the way that I thought about online instruction. What he says is that we provide the framework. We all have a syllabus or an idea of what we want to teach, but we leave it like a skeleton. And what happens is that our students come in and they fill in that skeleton. They give it the heart. They give it the soul. And that's how we need to think of our e-learning. Yes, we can provide a skeleton, but actually we shouldn't be planning. We shouldn't plan to the T or anything like that. And here's why. Because when students begin to have ownership and they shape their own curriculum, when they add the materials and, and, and they then they feel like, they contributed to their learning, and then it becomes very meaningful for them. And then they begin to take ownership of it. So one of the ways that you can do this um, is that you can have these different tools. Um, and in our, <laughs> well, Maria Jesus, I'm addicted to you. <laughs> um, and you can, you can have it to where students can really help each other to succeed. In all of my courses and in and most of my courses actually and even when I was a physical te uh, in the physical classroom my students always scored the highest they played they loved their lessons and I'm so incredibly blessed because every single day I get a student that uh, or a teacher that I train and every single day they say you transform my life you change the way that I teach and think and my students 
are love learning. They love me as a teacher. And so we can't do this, but um, we have to be able to see uh, how we can do this, how we can learn from each other, and how we can get our students to be a uh, part of their own learning and make it meaningful. So one of the first things they need to do is connect. If we want a community, that's what pedagogy is. Pedagogy is when we all become a community. When, for example, Jarek here or Frederick, and we all kind of know each other when you, we're like, hey, Frederick, you know, where I can come up and I can say, Frederick, can you please help me? You're so awesome at math, and I know you're awesome at math because we've been on this course for a while. And you know what? Can you really help me with this? Or um, Nevis or Esther, where we can say, hey, Esther, you're so good at drawing. You know what? I really need your help with that. So when we know each other that well, and you can have that in Moodle, you can really begin to have them have connections. So one of the first things we do, and you'll see this in all of the courses that I teach online, is I have a 3 to one introduction. So this is the first way where they get to know each other, and this is kind of fun, but it also gets them to test and work with technology. Because when you come online, you're really scared. You know, all of this online learning is very new, and I remember when I was at University of Phoenix, I freaked out. I was like, oh my gosh, how am I supposed to learn like this? How am I supposed to do statistics? How am I supposed to do action research? How am I supposed to do team learning this way? And it really was difficult for me. So uh, what you can introduce to each other. So what we do is we have them say three things they should know, we should know about them, two places they love to visit, and a job they wish they had. If they were not a teacher or you can even do this with young learners. I've done this with uh, four-year-olds, six-year-olds, where they can say they're, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? So you can change it, but it's three, two, one. They can choose any tool they want. So here you can see a variety of tools that were used. Some people use Piglet, some people use um, Animoto, some people use YouTube, some people use uh, Storybird, some people use uh, different types of comic creators, videos, haiku deck. So they used any kind of tool to create this 3 to one So you hear things, three things to know about me. Originally from, I teach here. Want, I want to learn. Here's another one. I want to be a journalist, my family. Here's another one. Um, I Three things about me, what I love to do, my job, my dream job. So you get to comment and you get to know about each other and you feel when your first, this is the first activity and when this is your first activity, you get very excited. This is what it looks like in Moodle. Now you can, on Moodle, they would embed their videos. Um, if they did something like Powtoons or anything like this, they could even put a picture up, you know, and then people go and then they comment. The rest go and they comment on each other. And that was very important where we put this in the discussion forum and we had them make sure that they would interact and get to know each other too. And then even the professors did this. So I even put one as well. You can decide for them to use a specific tool depending on what kind of uh, version of Moodle you have, or you can have them use um, whatever you, fits your Moodle or even fits your virtual learning environment. Another part of this is digital literacy. We need to think about what we and even teachers need to do online how do they become smarter online how do we go away from just googling how do we make what the way we teach how do we integrate it and also change the rituals and habits and in my course and um maria jesus will tell you that too we change we not only teach them we change the way they learn forever and the way we do is we teach them how a social bookmark we teach them how to curate, aggregate, how to do searching, how to evaluate resources, how to cite resources, how do they brainstorm, how they decode, remix, um, all of this kind of digital literacy. And this is something we do separate. It's actually embedded within the course. So one of the first things we do is we choose a collaborative bookmarking tool. That's how they get to add to how we all learn so we want them to gather the material so for example we taught we teach digital storytelling so the first thing they do um, is the first 
module is digital citizenship, right? Well, each of us, if I asked all of you here to go online and to find the best or the most exciting or one of the best resources for digital citizenship, you all would be able to give me one. You, some of you might give me a video, some of you might give me a, a game, some of you might give me um, an infographic. So this is what we do. We actually collect all of these together. These are the tools that I recommend. I recommend Pearl Tree. These are free, by the way. Everything that I show you today is free, okay? So you can use Pearl Tree, which is one of my favorite ones, and they just updated it, so I really think that Pearl Tree is one of the best ones. Your students can bookmark with you, everybody in the online course. You can embed it. It's beautiful. Storify is another one. We use Pinterest in the course. That's the one we use because we figured that would be the most popular. And since our teachers, um, sometimes it's anywhere from over 100, are new um, to, when they're new to learning online, we wanted to use something that maybe some of them were familiar with. And since Pinterest is the most popular social bookmarking tool, we thought that might be a good start. There's a Listly, EduClipper, and LiveBinder. So any of those, they're all free. You can decide the one you want. This is the one I'm leaning towards now. They did a lot of updates. Updates is Poultry.com. You can do it on a mo. By the way, all of this is on a. Um, all of these have mobile apps, so you cannot. You can do it on the web. You can do it with your web browser, but you can also bookmark on your mobile device. Isn't that awesome? That is very cool. So with Pearl Tree, it looks a lot like this, and everybody can add to this. You, you, if I put a group on, you just click on this uh, where it has the two people, and then you just add a, all of your students on there. And then they can continue to make each action grow. So Listly looks like this, so they give you ideas so that, and you can see the top helpers, it tells you all the people that are part of your bookmarking. So we went ahead and we gave them um, a step-by-step -step how to use Pinterest. So we did that, and then after we did that, this is what our Pinterest, you can even go, you can go to Pinterest.com slash story and tech, and you can see all of our bookmarks. It's a really quite amazing. Um, this is the second time we've done the module, so you'll, I, I think you'll just be amazed. Um, this is all collected by students all over the world. Um, and also teachers, so it, it's really just wonderful, um, and we this is part of our Moodle. So um, this was the different types of modules we had, and so we created a board for each one, and then Maria Jesus, is, who is just wonderful one here, was really helpful. They each also kept, along the way, they also kept their own digital storytelling e-portfolio board, okay? so. They kept their own board, and um, the way that this worked, they had to do this throughout the course, and the course is about, I would say, how much do you think, like eight, eight weeks maybe, uh, about two months maybe, um, that they take the course. And so here, you can see, this is one of our students' reflections. They're, um, they put the module, they have to list their favorite PD, their favorite resource, their favorite tool, and also, um, they can add some other stuff if they want. They have to give a, in Pinterest, you can give a description, so they give a description, they give a short description, and they have to tell how they're going to apply it in their classroom. So that's what we had them do. Um, but not only did we have them do that, what they also got to do, let's see, um, is they can also comment on each other. They can like, they can pin it, they can like it, they can pin others on their own boards as well. So you can see where they can learn from each other, they can steal bookmarks from each other, they can steal tools from each other. And it, it's really wonderful because they can all learn and keep this for life, well, as long as Pinterest is open. So they continue having these resources. And this was one of the problems I had with my learning, my master's course. It really upset me that all of the learning that I had online, I can't access it now. I can't take my ebooks. I can't really, I can't, I don't have the bookmarks. I don't have, they didn't do any of that in my master's. And so for our learners, I wanted to make sure that they would be able to keep the learning and they could refer to it for the rest of their life. 
then at the end of it, they actually reflected. So they had all of their boards together. And what they did was they made a reflection of it. So you can actually go and you can look at the reflections. Um, you can go under Pinterest.com, Shelly Terrell, and you can see a lot that I've done as well. And this is what their ePortfolio reflections look like. So what they did was they could take either Prezi, they took uh, Present.me, or they took VoiceThread, and they actually came on. This one was one of my favorites. He came out on video, and he talked about what he had learned throughout the whole course. This is what I learned in Module 1. This is what I learned in Module 2. And for them, it's very meaningful because then they could go back to the journey. They could see where they started. And for them, this was tough. They hadn't used digital tools before. But the great thing about it was they saw, wow, look at all I did. So I think that reflection process is really important because it's the way to get them to say, hey, I learned so much in the process. Thank you. Um, the other part of it is edge, um, you can use other tools. One of the tools that I really love a lot um, that kind of does everything because, you, you know, we have Pinterest and then we have these other tools. And this really worked for Moodle. But if your students are a little bit more advanced, if they used eTools in the past, then try edgyclipper.net. It has everything. It's like Pinterest, but it also lets you give an assignment library. And it also gives that, it also lets you go, and it also lets you do the video reflection. You don't go, it does everything. In other words, you don't have to go to another tool. So with us, we did use more than one tool. But if you used Edge Clipper, you wouldn't have to. In fact, Adam Bellows is a really good friend of mine. Um, and he's just done so much for teachers. He's really awesome. You can, they can even reflect through audio or text or video. And so for your learners who are starting out new, um, and it can save them a lot of work. All of that was pedagogy. In other words, they connected with each other. They created a community. They learn from each other. They got to say, here are some great resources. And everybody learned with those resources. So they really love that part of it. Um, the other part is connectivism. And what is connectivism? Well, this is a theory. And this is a theory from um, George Siemens, who's one of amazing, amazing person to connect with, but also Stephen Downs, two major people on online learning. Um, yeah, some say it's not a theory. It's, it, but what they say is, is it's the way we learn online. When you get online, think about it. When you post on Facebook, when you post a tweet, even when you send in, um, even when you're doing Pinterest or whether you do Instagram, when you post, there are people that see that and they learn from that. If you're in their stream, they're automatically learn because whatever whoever we connect with. We don't have a choice but to see what they post. You know, sometimes in Facebook, it's a little bit annoying for me because I've actually had to mute people because I'm like, wow, I don't like learning from them. I don't like what they post. Sometimes it's, it's pretty appalling. And then there's others that I'm like, man, I have to learn from them. I, you know, I really want them in my stream because they teach me so much. They inspire me. And so. Connectivism is talks about that. It talks about how when we learn online, who we connect with, who we decide that to follow, really de decides what we learn. So the way we got them to connect with each other is we had them join Twitter, and then we had a um, a hashtag. So you can even go to storytelling in TAF, the hashtag, and you can see the learning our students did. Now none of them were on Twitter. They actually had to create accounts, and, and they kicked and screamed about this. But in the end, I think they really enjoyed this. They had to um, share online. But not only that, they also got to connect with people that we said, hey, these are great people to learn from. These are people that are amazing. And they followed them, like Richard Byrne. Like, um, uh, for example, Miss Widdeen was one of them. Um, who's a great teacher who does awesome stuff. So we we were able to not only have, you know what this is about, and this is something that I think is really important. Do you see me all over this course? I was one of the professors and the designer of this course. But where do you see me in this course? Exactly. You see the learners. You see the students. 
And that's the point of this. That's what your course should look like. It should be that your learners are so excited that they're sharing and they're learning and they're doing all this. And they're not just receiving information from you because there's so much they can learn. And even if we're so smart, even if we're a doctor, even if we did all of these amazing things, the sad part about it is once they leave your classroom, then they no longer have the opportunity to learn anymore if it's only you. But if you connect them with some of the best thinkers all over the world and you show them great examples, they can continue that learning for life. And they'll want to continue that learning for life. And I think that's one of the most important parts about it. So how can we play online? Well, one of the best ways, I, we found out how to play. This is called a digital sandbox. And think about when you were a little kid or even little kids that you know about now. And when they're at the beach or the sand, what do they do? They pick up pals or they pick up cups or they pick up um, and they make castles. Or sometimes they just pick up the sand and, and they make a mound. Or sometimes they take the sand and they make patty out of it. Or sometimes um, they bury themselves in the sand. So in the sand, there are lots of play. And none, nobody really goes up to them and says, hey, you shouldn't play like that. Or this is the way you should play. In other words, we just let them play. And that's what you can do online. So we created this digital sandbox. This is what it kind of looks like. We did it through Symbaloo, but I think now I would use um, pearl trees. I think pearl tree is really wonderful. So what we did was when we told them create a comic, we didn't say use this tool. We told them here are a bunch of tools we recommend. All they do is they click and they, they complete the assignment with the tool. They don't like the tool, guess what? They can go back, they can use another tool. So they were allowed a lot of freedom. We, we just told them, um, basically, this is the assignment. Create a comic summarizing your feelings. We've done other things that were more in-depth, and I'll show you those as well. What does this look like? So one of the things we did is, in Moodle, we made it to where um, it looked a lot like this. Um, for those that had low bandwidth, we also listed it. So you can embed, the great thing is you can embed pearl trees and you can embed the Symbaloo within the Moodle. So you can do that. Um, and they could use any of the tools. They just click on it. They had a description. And then they completed their assignment. Um, but part of it is, too, um, is we had them put that no, it wasn't. They have never, okay, you have to understand our students um, never used Web 2.0 tools before. They never did. Because is it confusing when you have all these toys to play with? Imagine yourself with all of these toys in a toy box. You have all these toys. Well, when you go, you're just supposed to play. And when you play, you don't get... You don't get punished for playing in our playground. If you don't like the tool, guess what you're going to do? You're going to go back and you're going to choose another tool. So that's what it did for them. Um, yeah, exactly. And sometimes they're going to go back to the kitchen pots and pans. But you still gave them all of the choices. Um, that's the thing you have to think about. It, it, it still goes back to the pedagogy. It goes back to the learning. It doesn't matter the tool they use. What it matters is the outcome. And you can get so many different outcomes. And you know, for, for me personally, I think Maria Jesus will say for the other tutors that teach this course, when you have so much diversity and it's not the same essay again or it's not the same video again or it's not the same, when it's all different, your grading is not stressful. It's so interesting. I love it. Exactly, Esther. It's a work of art. Every time I grade, it's a work of art. It's amazing. I just love it. I'm so inspired. My students inspire me. Um, so you can even brainstorm online. How do we brainstorm? Well, we use something called Padlet.com. Um, and here you can see we collected a lot of different things. You can embed it. Um, and in, in, 
they were able to post different things within the hair as well. So I think Padlet's a great tool for that. It's so visually pleasing. It's free. They don't have to register for anything, and it's really wonderful. You can explore. We have a lot of this stuff online, so that you can go and you can explore. Poplet. Poplet's another really great tool for brainstorming online, and everybody can go on, and they do have to register with Poplet, though. It looks a lot like this. They can even draw. They can do this on a mobile device. All these tools are free, like I said, so it's good to explore because they're free. Um, and it's just like here. I'm showing you a lot of tools, but let me tell you, when I do a presentation, it's like a buffet. Uh, when you go to a buffet or you go to someone's house and they cooked a great, great big feast for you, you see all of the food, right? It looks delicious, right? Exactly. My Frederick, you talked about mind mapping. You can do that if you go to Poplet. Uh, Poplet is um, But the great thing about it, when you think about it, when you go and you, um, you're not going to serve yourself too much because what are you going to do? You're going to get full and you're going to get sick. So one of the things that you can do is that you can choose. And that's what I encourage you to do today. Look at the tools that you see that really scream to you and say, wow, that's so cool. The two or three tools. And that's what we do with our students, too. When they go play, it's like, choose the two or three. That's why we have them do a reflection. Every single module, they have to say one thing that they love the best, one of their tools. Um, and that's what you do, is, is you go, and then if they don't like it, then they can come back. And some of them said, I don't really like this tool at all. This was a terrible tool. But then others said, I really love this tool. This was my favorite tool. So that way you meet their different needs. Um, and so this is what it looks like. I recommend Poplet. We had them brainstorm through storyboards as well. Um, I made a template. They, they received this. Um, I did it in uh, Microsoft Word. But all my templates are also on Google. Um, they're Google templates. So all they do is they can go up and they can fill them out. Um, in my new book, that's what I have. I have a bunch of tool, uh, different types of um, different types of templates for teachers that are storyboards. Um, and also because I believe brainstorming is part of every single type of lesson they do. Like I really think brainstorming. Um, is one of those things that really makes your students smarter. And I try to get our teachers, we train teachers. My students are teachers. I also teach English language learners as well. I often take over classes around the world. Um, and we go through the same process. The same process I'm teaching you online, I go with them in person. We do the brainstorming. So here they had to create a film. Um, and their film, they could choose the genre, and they had to the genre, and they could storyboard. So they did all this. This was a student who did it. Um, they took uh, screenshots. They could have done drawings, a million things they could have done with that. Um, we also inspired them, and this was something that Maria Jesus did this year, and I thought was really awesome and interesting. So we, the problem was when we first did this course, there was too many awesome activities to do. And our students loved it, but they were very stressed out. They said, when they started creating, they said, oh my gosh, all I do is eat and breathe this course. So now we did missions. Um, each time they get a weekly mission. And so if they wanted to go above and beyond, they could. And they would get badges for that. So it was sort of like um, above and beyond, sort of like a gamification. We gamified almost in the way our course because they got to get different types of um, badges and stuff for it. They got to sh show it off and say, hey, I got a badge for this. So these are all ideas that you know we used within our Moodle. Um, yeah, exactly. So what we did is we only gave them a few activities, and then the rest of them we gave them. And, and then if they completed that, they got a badge for it. So that's what we did. Um, there's other things you can do. One of the things you can do is uh, use memes. So I'm giving you ideas. Whatever ideas that you think, oh, I can do this in my course, then you can do it in your course. Feel free to steal any of these ideas. <laughs> but another idea is a meme. A meme is has to do with culture. And what it means is that when you have um, different memes, yes, exactly, and that's the other thing. Um, you didn't have to do the missions. These were all voluntary. So a meme is, is a cultural icon. You've actually probably been part of a meme. How many of you have heard of the Harlem Shake? How many of you have heard 
of um, um, a mob, a flash mob. Never heard of a flash mob. You have how many of you have seen things like, uh, for example, when you have different sayings like LOL. How many of you used LOL? Those are all memes. Memes are things. They're either language. They're either um, they're rituals. They're dances. They're videos. They're all of these that we use all over the world that translates through culture. So cultures, um, it's repetition. We repeat others' behaviors and language. This is what a meme looks like. So you might have seen a lot of these on on Facebook. And so what happens is our learners, they learn this way. Actually, there's many learners. I've been to 26 countries, and I meet 10-year-olds who learn um, through Facebook, I mean through YouTube, and through memes. That's how they learn about English. They, they learn with these. They make these. So how many of you have seen the Keep Calm one? Keep Calm, and then I made this one, except when it's your birthday, and then Boogie On. This one's called the Success Baby. Um, there's some of them you can hear is one called Ain't Nobody Got Time For That. So these are the way your students can learn. Well, you can use these to teach your students. You can post rules. You can have them create language with it. So what I want you to do right now is to take one of these, either Keep Calm and or the Success Baby or Ain't Nobody Got Time For That and to create a meme. So here, um, you're creating a meme. So you can, we'll see the memes that you create. <laughs> so I want you to type that in the box. So somebody give me some memes that I can put in here. So keep calm and what? Keep calm. I knew one. How about keep calm and Moodle on? We can we're gonna work for our students, yeah, maybe. Uh, keep calm and what else? Maybe my thing. And go on moving, yeah. And keep calm and connect. Keep calm and work. Keep calm and don't give up. Yes, keep calm and do your homework. Keep calm and open your mind. Keep adapt to change. How about keep calm and I else? Maybe that. Keep calm in whatever test that you have. Um. Keep calm and be open. Yeah, exactly. So for a test or something, this really helps them relax. Keep calm or else. <laughs> um, keep calm and and comment. Keep calm and Pinterest. Keep calm. Whatever you do, ain't nobody got time for that. Well, these are for rules. Okay. So what is some of the things that we want to tell them that? Okay. So what is something that really annoys you or that you're trying to get your students not to do in your class? What's a rule? What is something that you're saying? Please don't ever do that. Ain't nobody got time for plagiarism. Exactly. What else? <laughs> don't eat in class. Ain't, okay. Eating in class. Ain't nobody got time for that. Sleeping in class. Ain't nobody got time for that. How about turning assignments in late? Ain't nobody got time for that. But you know this when you do it for this, when you do it this way, then all of a sudden it's funny, it's fun. Your students pay attention to it. The other way, when you keep saying "Don't eat in class, don't cheat, don't do this," your students are like, "Ah, oh, teacher, I've heard this a million times." And guess what? They tune you out. So memes are a great way to kind of introduce this and really get them to listen. Um, we used a lot of comic creation, and comics really help your learners, especially language learners. They contextualize language. One of the things we have them do, and this is from one of the cor the courses, um, the students is transform a piece of literature into a comic. So here, um, one of our teachers they did Pride and Prejudice. Uh, when you think about it, think about Pride and Prejudice. A lot of your students wouldn't be interested in that, but if they see it in a comic, if you use this to introduce it, or if they translate what they learn, the articles, um, the poetry, whatever kind of reading that you have them do, they translate it in a comic, then they get to contextualize it, and it's fun for them. So this is what we did. We used comics, and you can use comics in so many different ways. 
and use comics to also um, encourage them to write in different styles. So that's one of the things that we had them you you can do as well in your courses. If you want them to write, then do it in a comic form. You want to put a prompt. I've taken testing prompts and I've put them in comics. You can use uh, makebeliefscomics.com. It has really free, incredible tools that you can use. It's one of my favorite tools for comic creation and also to have one. Uh, photo prompts. Uh, what they do is um, my really good friend John Spencer and also who happens to be the um, the author like the graphic artist of my book um, he he has created this they're all free um, you can use them you can you're free to steal them and use them so right now I want you to use this photo prompt to write Yoda is now controlling your Siri on your phone what would it, what's a conversation that Yoda would, that your Siri might write with Yoda. So, so Yoda is your new Siri. What's going to be a conversation? I want you to type this in the chat box. And there's so many things. Experiment. See how, you know, try one of these. So think about something that, um, that, that Yoda might say. Your text list. <laughs> so in the past, I've had things like, for example, um, yeah, you can use the mic. To, uh, yeah, if you wanted to use the mic, you can do that as well. So think about things that Yoda might say. And the fact that I get to be with you today, and we went through all this, and you got to play with me. Reason. Okay. Do you go, maybe? Siri, perfect is. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Um, some of the other things he might do is, uh, for example, learning. Um, you know, learning on Moodle. Maybe he can say something like, uh, Moodle we learn <laughs> so you're doing these differently um but you can see how automatically you, it makes you think so you can use different things like that so some of your other photo props for example um if you go back to the dialogue and we can do that try to think of a dialogue so right here it says imagine a conversation between christopher columbus and native americans how would their world have changed so what would be a conversation that you think they would have. So what might Christopher Columbus say if he first saw the Native Americans? What, what would be something that they might think? Hi! <laughs> Maybe that's an interesting hairdress you have. You real woman or not? Yes, exactly. Maybe. Uh, maybe someone says, you know, maybe they, they would say, yeah, what's up? Maybe they might say, what's up? And what if the Native, Native Americans might say, um, oh, well, we were just hunting or gathering. Sorry, I am sorry. Use my lightsaber the way I cannot. Yes, okay, good. So, see, it really makes you think. It really makes you write. Um, and it is critical thinking as well. So, after a while, your students really get the hang of it. And these are the things that they begin to do. And is it fun? Yes. It did. You didn't even realize how much fun you were having and all the thinking that went about. The way that we grade a lot of this, um, the best way that I found is that you is do it through rubrics. And having that rubric on um, Moodle is, is one of the best ways that I found to do this. We tried some other ways. It didn't work so well. The, mood, the rubric seemed to just be the best way. So that's the option I would say. Um, a lot of these, you can find rubrics already that you can just translate to Moodle. Um, I would say go to Kathy Schrock. She has them all. Um, the Schrock Guide .net. Um, sh Kathy Schrock is definitely one of those people you should uh, connect with. Um, she's just amazing. And you can even Google her or you can find yeah, her. Yeah, hi, thank you. We still have a few um, minutes, uh, Shelly, for questions. Um, just so I'm just adding smart, Shelly's. So. Um, and oh, PPT I did the there. there. Sorry about that. There we go. So, any questions, so comments? Grab the mic. I'll, um, I'll down throw and it your way for you just uh, let me know in the chat box. We'd love like to hear that. your voice. Thank you. 
So be brave. So now we're going to wrap Shelley up. Says, and we're going to talk and, about and why is who this wants all the mic important? as a well, way to start this. The reason this is all important Anybody is because wants the right mic? now there's e learning everywhere. And it's really so boring. And it doesn't translate well. And our students aren't really critical thinking. They're not being challenged. And they're getting really bored with learning. But the thing about it is, think of your Moodle, think of your virtual learning environment as something that you can play with. It, you have so much potential online. And there's so many things. Experiment. See how, you know, try one of these ideas. You don't have to try them all. Still one of the ideas and try it next Moodle Thank you, you have. Thank you, The Shelley. next online course you have. Try one and yes, see how your students respond. <laughs> the number one benefit of yeah. education technology is it empowers yeah, Muhammad, people you'll learn more about it in it the next It lets them be creative, productive, and learn and things you get your they never thought they could for, learn uh, these sessions. Thank you. Thank you, Shelly. About Thank 50 you, years ago. Yeah, go um, ahead, Shelly. I'm going to put my video back on so you can see me. Is this. I am a Hispanic, Latina, American woman. And the fact that I get to be with you today, and we went through all this, and you got to play with me, you got to think with me, you got to talk like Yoda with me, you got to meme with me, is amazing because 50 years ago, you couldn't do this. Uh, 50 years ago, I couldn't teach you very well because I'm a woman and I'm Hispanic. A long time ago, hundreds of years ago, knowledge only belonged to a few people. And I think that it's so amazing that you get to be teachers. You get to provide access to students in Africa, to students in um, in, in, in Nepal, where they hardly have electricity, to students, you know, e-learning is so amazing because they can gather for free in your class doing an amazing, amazing thing. You're brilliant teachers who have allowed students who could never learn the way that they have the ability to now with you. So make it meaningful. Give them not just the learning that just like typical, below their minds because for many of them this thank is you for volunteering such a rare Shelley, opportunity it's, their it's parents you volunteered never to be i mean part of. people have to you realize can go that uh, on people are giving to their my volunteer um, time you can go to amazing. my culture you Shelley, can uh, there's a link there that you can play join around us. Uh, try something that right really now, matters to you but, something uh, that you think is just to follow up and for questions giving you links so feel free to use the courseware course feed so um, can someone add the link to the course feed as well. so we can, you can download them, you can uh, the discussion and keep learning the more that you, you go plus. She's and of course, I'm recording this. My new book is coming out. I put a lot of these ideas in there. You're going to see it really soon. It's an e-book, so anybody can yeah, download Yeah, she's it. part of the Moodle. She's a real uh, make sure advanced that lots Moodler. and lots of teachers just like you have the tools and the ability to yep. really empower your learners. You're not just a teacher. You're not just an online teacher. You transform lives. You create the next generation who gets to teach others online too. So thank you so much for being a part of this. You can connect with me Definitely. in any of these spaces, whatever you prefer. And um, thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank you all. You should give yourselves a, a, a pat in the back. You no, get thank to you. I think everybody knows it's in the syllabus. And do all it's this. in the course, so actually. Take risks. In the, in the course step out of your I'm comfort just, zone. Um, and learn to Tom okay. added it to the chat <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Tom. Uh, yeah, that's where uh, you get all the information. And you can ask questions there. Tom, that's not... That looks like a tutorial. Okay. It doesn't look like uh, a uh, course feed. It doesn't have course feed on it. Yeah, there's the course feed. All right. That's it. So it's the second link there. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Shelly.